So today we're going to be CNCing a custom guitar body for phase three of the touch capacitive pickup switching system. We're gonna be using the Sapili that I have here in the shop. It's very dense and very heavy. So many of the operations that we're going to be doing on the table is going to be weight relief. First thing we need to do is joint this. So I have a jointer right over here and I'll be running it through the jointer, taking off probably 1 32nd, 1 16th of an inch, gluing them up, which I won't film. You've seen that a thousand times. And then once it's glued up, we'll stick it on the table and start machining. So this build is going to allow us to do two things. One, it's going to allow us to prototype a super strat body. And I'll go through the design evolution process with you in the next video. But for this video, it will simply be machining it. And of course, the second reason why we're doing this is to have a body to place the touch capacitive pickup switching system into. I don't have one lying around, so we're going to build one. All right, so we have this two piece Sapili already jointed up and it's on the table. We're going to do the back first, 3D adaptive hogs, then the finishing pass, then we'll do the very large control cavity. And there we go. So we have these two operations completed. The first operation was the 3D adaptive hog out, which efficiently removes most of the wood and I leave about half a millimeter for the second operation, which is the finishing pass or the ball end end mill. And you can see that this is absolutely super smooth. This is right off of the CNC. In fact, it's not even off the CNC, it's still on the table. Um, so it's never been touched with sandpaper or files. It's just straight off the end mill. And I'll get in here with some magnification so we can see if we can actually still see the cusps because I don't even feel them. So right here is the edge of the body and then it slopes down into the belly cut. And you can't even see, barely, even at an angle, any cusps. And that's all of it. Right there you can see a little bit, just a tiny tad bit there. And this line is perfect. So here's the belly cut line. It's absolutely gorgeous. This is not something you could easily do even on a CNC machine. It's just perfect. And here is the little slope cutout that's gonna be for the set neck. So typically when you glue the neck on with a set neck, you have to do a lot of carving. And I'm gonna be able to avoid pretty much all that carving. I'm simply just gonna glue it on carbon's already pre-done. So this actually slopes down to something really thin. Uh, I want to say that's about three mil, three, maybe four mil at the, at the very tip of the slope. And again, look at these clean lines and cuts. This is really hard to do with just a file and sandpaper or power tools, let alone on the CNC. And it just came out perfectly. And over here is lower horn. So it just keeps going down to the lower horn here. And it's super smooth, really nice. Here's that back pocket. Then notice I'm not going all the way through. I don't need to because I'm going to be cutting from the top. That's going to remove all this meat. All I needed to do was make the lip for the cover and the pockets for the M3 inserts. All right, so I've just finished machining all the top weight relief pockets. So these are all 3D adaptive tool paths. The whole idea is this is going to be rough and quick. There's no reason why we need to have a very fine finish. 
there's no reason to go slow for a beautiful finishing pass. These are very quick. I'm pushing my machine as much as it'll go. So a lot of these pockets have chatter marks along the edge because I'm pushing my machine to its extreme for speed and efficiency. So no one is ever gonna see this. No one's gonna see these weight relief pockets in here. This is going to be completely covered by the seven mil spalted maple top. So I have designed these weight relief pockets in particular to compensate for the belly cut that's on the back. So I can't go too deep with these. I can go pretty deep with this one. You can see how deep that is there because there's nothing in the back. There's no carve in the back that would get in the way with going fairly low. This guy is pretty much where the belly cut is, so I wasn't able to remove a lot of meat, but it's still gonna offer some weight relief, as well as the upper horn. The lower horn also has some weight relief, but there's a step here. So notice I've gone all the way through, because back here is the actual control cavity. It's gonna be a maple top on top, so um, it doesn't matter that I go all the way through. I really wanted to get this weight down. There are some curves here, and that just is allowing me to go a little bit in between the pickups, so the pickups will be slanted this way. And I'm able to go just a little bit in between them and a little bit behind them, just again, get that weight out of this wood because it's too heavy. This back here is just a step. I'm designing this body to essentially be both a body that can be used for a headless design as well as with a headstock and a traditional bridge. So the traditional bridge is gonna go back here, but it can use headless tuners or you can get your finger under there. And that's why there's a step here. And this step will be visible in the design. All right, so this is off the CNC table and all the cuts that I can do to this lower blank are complete. So the next thing we need to do is glue the top on. And then once the top is on, then we'll be able to actually add the neck pocket and then the pickup pockets. And I think after that, we'll do the um, arm carve.
Okay, so the top has been glued on to the lower body blank. And after I took this out of the vacuum bag, I noticed there were some cracks along these ink vines in the spalt, just going all the way down here as well. And so all I did was flood them with super glue and you can see the super glue here and went all the way down to here. And so flood it with super glue and then put it on the table and then ran my facing operation. All the facing operation does is ensure that this wood is level with the end mill. So the end mill just kind of goes back and forth, back and forth. I'm using a 0.3 step over so it's super smooth. Doesn't even need sand. You can't even see any of the cusps. And so some of those cracks are still there. I can't get my fingernail in them, so the super glue worked here. And there's nothing here, so it wasn't that deep, but there is one here along this ink vine here. I can't get my fingernail in there. I think we're okay with those little stress cracks. So if you remember earlier, I was filling in all these cracks with super glue, and they all fell on the outside of the outline of the guitar, so none of those are impacting the actual guitar with the exception of a couple of those little cracks coming through at the very end. But one of the operations we're gonna have is the arm carve. And the arm carve is gonna start way up here and go all the way back. So a lot of this wood is gonna be gone and or um, greatly reduced. So it's looking really good after this facing operation. I'm really happy with it. And you can see some of that weird ink, vine, ambrosia spalting here. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to be doing another carve to the top. So it's gonna be doing a carve here where the neck pocket's gonna be and a carve back here in order to get your fingers under for headless tuners. All right, let's go ahead and work on those operations. All right, so these operations are complete. So the first thing we did was the facing operation that we talked about. And this particular facing operation extends one millimeter beyond the contour of the guitar. And then we're doing this uh, step down. And this is actually a new tool path I'm trying out that detects flat areas. And so the idea is I am cutting away the top at both the back and the front to expose the sapili underneath it. I think it's gonna look really cool this way. So when we put the neck pocket in here, you're gonna see a little bit of sapili and that top, and it's gonna be just a straight drop. There's not gonna be a round over or anything on these parts. It's gonna look really cool. And of course, we have this step down here for the headless tuners, if headless tuners are used, but in this case, it's gonna be a hard tail for this build. And then the last thing I did was the inlays. And so these are at two distinct depths. I have the actual two inlays that will be for the neck and bridge humbucker and these are a quarter inch thick and so I went just a little bit half of that distance down so that they protrude because I want them to stick out. I want them to be sort of tactile and you can actually feel them. And then these here at the bottom and in the middle are decorative and these are 0.6 millimeters Thick, and you'd think, oh, that's pretty thin. These are very hard pieces of copper. And so I want these to stick out just a little bit, but not much. So I'll be inserting them here. And so when we have the humbucker route, the humbucker is gonna eat through a portion of these. It's gonna look really cool. Same thing here. So the cutout or the contour will eat through some of that copper inlay. And that way it's gonna look really cool. And so what I'm gonna do is I'll do the decorative ones first. I'm just gonna probably use epoxy or maybe black super glue, I'm not sure yet. And the last ones I'll focus on are the actual touch capacitive portions. And in this case, I'm gonna have to drill a hole here, put a dimple in the actual copper to be able to solder a wire to. 
So I'm gonna work those out later, but for now, this is what it looks like. I think it's looking really cool. So far, so good. So that's all I have for this week. Next week, we'll get the pickups in, so we'll be able to measure them, design the pockets, and machine the pockets. We'll also machine out the neck pocket and inset the inlays. Thanks for watching, and take it easy.